Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias. Now, as the race towards the 2023 general elections continue, politicians have been making their stand known as to who gets what and where. However, the youths with over half the population of the total number of votes are yet to feature. So where do the youths stand? What will they be demanding for? And what positions will they be occupying? These are questions that will be finding out answers to you in this edition of the program. And we have joining us today, Ulukade Oyemakinde. He is the managing partner at the Alexis Law Practice and a former aspirant to the Lagos State House of Assembly. He is a social commentator and a personal development and human resource facilitator. He joins us right here in our Lagos studio. It's a pleasure to have you on the program today. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Indeed, you're welcome. Thank we you. also have joining us um, via Zoom, Ayodele Adio. He is the managing editor of the Avalon Daily Newspaper. It's a pleasure to have you on the program today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. It's a pleasure to have you as well. We also have joining us um, via Zoom from Asaba and Delta State, El Elvis Akpobi. He is a youth advocate and leadership enthusiast. He is a founder and executive director of the Not Too Young to Lead initiative and currently the special assistant to the governor of Delta State on youth development. It's a pleasure to have you on the program, um, Elvis. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon again. So, um, uh, kicks out the conversation for us. I mean, it's been um, weeks of back and forth between politicians from the southern and the northern region of the country talking about 2023, who gets what, like I just said. But, I mean, for some reason, the youths just have are yet to surface in all of these discussions. And as it is, the youths will have the final say when the time comes. So, where do the youths stand? Where do, what, what is the position right now of the youths in the policy? If I, thank you for the question and the invitation once again. Um, if I want to start from our comments shortly before we came on here, yeah. I told you that uh, things are not really going well with the populace generally in Nigeria, and the youths are not an exemption to the statistics. And uh, if you look properly inwards, Nigerians are not getting better. Uh, things are not improving. As a matter of fact, Nigerians are hungry, which the youths are not uh, exclusive to this. It's wholesome. It is, they, are, they are part of the system. Sh now, sh shouldn't that be a fuel for them you know, to, to, to make them want to see things change? Shouldn't yes, they want to see things change. Out there? But it is only a man that is uh, probably eating that we have the strength to protest. When you are weak, you are down. When you are down and you are down, there is no other place you go, except you go up. You need something to pull you up. Yes, the youths may wake up, but the way I see things, they, they've been too, um, they've been hit so hard that, including their businesses and so on and so forth, and elections are not cheap, very expensive. Things have not, uh, they haven't been going on well, and the economy, look at the exchange rates and the likes like that, where are they going to get money to go and vote? At right least, now, yeah. go, go and contest. Right now, any, if you want to contest an election, you need money. When your uh, income has already been affected, how do you get money to, to, to do all this? So it seems as if the, the, the class of 1950s, 1960s are still in charge, and they have succeeded in trampling on the psyche and the finances, everything, all strata of life of the youth. And that's how we find ourselves today. Let me quickly uh, get to hear from Ayodele, who is um, also standing by uh, via Zoom. Um, Ayodele, so um, Olukaide here is saying that a lot is going on in the country that has, you know, trifled upon, uh, you know, the, the voices of the young people ahead of the elections. Uh, but, but in your own estimation, why do you think that, I mean, we've been hearing so much from the politicians, but we're yet to hear from the people who would have the final say when the time comes? Yeah, thank you again. Uh, thank you once again. Let me just quickly start by saying that in 2019, the highest amount of registered voters 
that formed the most important voting bloc in the 2019 elections um, were students, young people. There were 22 million um, in number and could have tilted the election in any direction um, where they voted in bloc or in mass. INEC has just released its data of the first million people who have just registered in the last three months that it's opened this registration portal. And it's essentially said that over 70% of the people who have just registered are young people. Now, fundamentally, the reality is that young people have the numbers to alter or tilt any election in their favor. The problem, however, is is that there are systemic limitations that makes it impossible for the young people to organize as a voting bloc and to be able to influence the outcome of elections as it normally should be. And some of the reasons are very simple. One of them is the fact that because young people, by nature of being young, are always socially mobile. They move from schools to internships, to service, to jobs. And as they improve in their jobs, they constantly change locations. That means if a young man registered in the University of Benin to vote and he lives in Lagos, at the time of elections, he's completely handicapped because um, his tough. PVC is tied in, in Benin. And that's the number one thing that disenfranchises young people across the country. That's why you see a lot of them playing football on election day because their polling units is completely different from where they register. And the gamut of systemic issues um, that keep young people out of the voting circle um, is a huge thing. But let me just say that fundamentally, there is no time in the history of this country where young people have the numbers to tilt the election in their favor so much so as it will happen in 2023 because they have the numbers and the usual voting bloc that the predominant political parties usually re rely on are aging. And these are market women, unions, transport workers, and all of that across the country, that voting demography is aging. And except they begin to tell a new story, a compelling story to this new generation of voters, I think that they'll be shocked at what they'll see at the polls um, in 2023. My prayer is that there is somebody enough, there's somebody out there who has the vision uh, and the audacity to organize these young people around a particular cause um, that will move this nation forward. And you will see young people turn up in numbers. Well, we have to wait and see, you know, when that time comes, if that will eventually happen. But uh, let me quickly also get um, to Elvis, um, who is joining us uh, from Asaba. Elvis, um, you know, quite a lot of things have been said. Uh, one of them is the fact that, you know, the numbers are there, but somehow the ability, you know, to put these young people together and form a force, so to speak, to be reckoned with when that time comes is just not there. But do you see that happening? when the time eventually comes? Yes, I see, I see that happening, but I believe that um, for us to achieve what we ought to achieve, for us to achieve that Nigeria dream, we should be able to bury these differences, ethnic group and um, party differences. Because for me, I believe that um, to make Nigeria better, to achieve the Nigeria dream has nothing to do with being on a political left or right, like other different parties. It has a lot to do with young people who believe that um, the need to, as in the Nigeria dream, is in their hands. And if you observe, there is this change of helplessness and hopelessness among ni young Nigerians. It seems as if the Nigeria dream is escaping Nigerians because um, when you consistently see careless incompetence by people who are contractors, people who ordinarily should make policies that will better our environment, people who should make Nigeria safe for us, it becomes e so easy to be helpless and hopeless. The average Nigerian youth today is helpless and hopeless because he doesn't even believe, doesn't see himself thriving in Nigeria, his own environment. A lot of young persons are... So, 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 so what can be done, Elvis, what, what, what can be done to... So, sorry, Elvis, what can be done to bring back that hope that the Nigerian youth deserves or, or that you do not see in the Nigerian youth that would make him get up, you know, and, and ask those questions and make demands and, you know, in order for him to move forward or her? It just, it's for me it's just to engage them and see make them believe that um, it's still possible because um, they, there's this um, poverty in our land which tends to make them shy away from electoral processes. They'll be like, I need to make money for it. But I believe that it's only young persons that can change the dynamics in this country and it's possible. So, 
with advocacy, awareness, or PVC. The first step is getting a PVC. All right, um, I'll come back to you again. Uh, let me come back to you, um, uh, Ulukaida. You have been in the process. You know, you have aspired to, you know, a political office before. And you made mention of something that struck me. He said elections are not cheap. We all understand that elections are not cheap. But he just made mention of something, you know, advocacy. You know, that's coming together we, with social media and all of that. We've seen how uh, people have raised money for advocacy, you know, causes, you know, be it for education, be it for health. Why hasn't that happened for young people? I mean, young people came together to support the Not Too Young to Run, you know, movement. And today, you know, there are, there's been some constitutional changes to that effect. So why haven't young people come together to identify with a particular candidate or candidate, so to speak, and to, you know, source, crowdsource for that money and ensure that their elections or their campaigns are bankrolled to the point that they challenge those who have, like you said, you know, have kept them uh, beneath them, you know, all of these decades? Well, the majority of those who are expected to support, as you've mentioned, they are either in Canada or they are on their way to Canada. Yes, I already said something earlier that... Um, the youths have the largest voting block in terms of election um, figure. But just, I think last week or so, uh, it was in news that the UK registered about probably about 500 and something medical doctors. They're part of this figure. They're part of the statistics. UK is benefiting, Canada, the US, and many other Caribbean countries. So now, those that are expected the middle class is they, moving they, they, they can still they can still they can still make their contributions from wherever they are can't they they have they have lost interest they've lost belief in the country they are they are focused out their focus is now out of the country they, are, they anybody you find now in nigeria it's either the person is processing traveling abroad or is yet to get some certain documents right or probably the opportunity haven't arisen which which, which of those stages are you in I'm in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm in Nigeria. We still have hope in Nigeria, but I, I wouldn't lie to you. The hope is thinning out every day. I wouldn't lie to you. So at the point, we, will, we won't have the middle class again. It will be the extreme rich and the extreme poor. That's going to be a crisis in our hands. Let's hope we don't get to that crisis. Adele, let me quickly Amen. come to you just to get your reactions. Um, to that, the issue of crowdfunding and crowdsourcing um, resources to, you know, to support pol young politicians. Uh, we already see that there is something going on with women. We have Elect Her, where they're trying to raise, I think, about $10 million for females that are going to run for positions uh, either in the state legisl legislative houses or even the federal legislative houses. Uh, but, I mean, that's even for women. Now, that's focused mainly for women, but... Uh, for, for, for the general youth, um, why isn't that happening? Okay, first let me start by saying that it was Frederick Douglass who once said that I had prayed for 20 years and nothing happened until I began to pray with my feet. So the first thing is that young people have to start praying with their votes. Um, because while prayer changes things, it is votes that changes governments. And so the first thing is for young people to realize that they have the power in themselves to change governments. And that so, realization... Sorry to, um, so, sorry to butt in, Ayodele. Sorry to butt in. I'm, I'm gonna, we, we, I, let me just hold you there for a bit. We need to take a quick break. Of course, when I come back, he would um, continue with the things that young people need to do when it comes to changing uh, the status quo. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We we'll still have with us our panelists joining us via Zoom as well as in our Lagos studio. But just before we took that quick break, Ayodele was making a reference to Frederick Douglass who said he prayed for 20 years and nothing happened and he had to pray with his feet. But Ayodele, you were talking about what young people need to start praying with before we went on that break. So please, if you could, you know, continue making that, 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 um, that um, uh, statement. Yeah. Absolutely. So I was making the argument that young people would need to start praying with their votes because it's votes that changes governments and not um, prayer points. 
and the ultimate realization and the fact that your votes count and your vote can change government should be the very beginning of the conversation for us to steer 2023 in the direction that we want it to go. But let me also state that it's not just about voting on election day, it's about the processes leading to the election in itself. And young people must begin to advocate um, for favorable conditions that lead to that particular voting process, one of which um, is how the election is being conducted, how votes are being counted, how results are being transmitted. There's a huge conversation about the Electoral Act, whether or not there should be electronic transmission of votes. Young people must have their voices heard. And if you ever thought that electronic transmission of votes was not necessary, then you were not paying, to the just, paying attention to the just concluded Lagos government elections where votes changed from votes that were signed at the polling units to the votes that were announced um, um, you know, at the local government at the coalition center. So young people must begin to argue um, um, that the processes leading to elections must be free, must be transparent, must be fireproof. So it inspires confidence in the people that are going to go out to vote. I, I, Secondly, I really... and most critically. Go ahead. Secondly, and most critically. Yes. Secondly, and, and most critically, it's what are young people organizing behind? It's not just about raising funds to support young people. It's about supporting the young people with the vision and the manifesto to move young people forward. That is how the Labour Party started. They organized around the principles of the average voter, the I average really, worker, and they I, organized to support them. So who are we supporting? What are we organizing behind? What I are really, the issues young people face? That's what we should be organizing behind. I really, you know, apparently that was what I was going to ask you because it seems that, like I said earlier on, you know, I said the Southern governors are speaking. Northern politicians and governors are speaking. You know, young people are not speaking. We're not hearing them out here in the news. So what is going on exactly? That was what I was trying to ask you um, earlier on, because they need to come together, they need to do this, they need to do that. But as it is, we're not hearing anything. So what exactly is the problem? Uh, don't, let me poke you a little bit when you say that you're not hearing young people in the news. I'd, I'd, try, I'd poke you a little bit and you'd forgive me. The reason you're not hearing a lot of young people is because every time there's a national issue to be discussed, um, traditional media houses um, take their microphones to the old and established politicians who have truthfully plunged our country into what it is today um, for sound bites. Nobody is, uh, is asking for the perspective of young, of young brilliant people. economists of the direction of the country. Nobody is talking to young, savvy agriculturists what agricultural policies should look like. Nobody is talking to young people who have fantastic degrees and experience in, in multinational um, um, organizations, what the future of governance should look like in this country. I really, We're I really, talking to the same old people, and, I really, and that's why it looks I really, like I really, young people are out. I really have all of these people you made mention of, have they come together to form a group, to form a coalition, to, to bring themselves out and say, okay, hey, this is who we are. We are the coalition. We're young people. You know, we're looking at this. We're looking at that. We, 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 this is what we intend to do. I mean, do we have any group of young people out there that, you know, when anything like this happens, you say, okay, there's a go-to group, there's a go-to uh, platform and all of that, you know, where you have all of these young people with these bright ideas like he talked about now. We don't have any, do we have anything of like course. that? Of course, you have a plethora of young people. For instance, there's the Youth Party, who every quarter puts out a policy document on some of the deep national issues that we face in our country. They constantly put out alternative ideas, put out papers, put out uh, um, their intentions on how the country can be better governed. And I hope that a lot of more, a uh, 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 country pays a lot more attention to that fabulous group who are doing an interesting work. And I know there are a lot of civil society and NGOs and young people in civil, um, civil society groups who are also putting out ideas in their own little spheres. Um, we only need to just put a lot more attention um, to the work that they are doing and have confidence um, in the work that they put out and not always thinking that um, this group of people have nothing to offer. Um, I think it's just is, 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 is the syndrome of being attached to this um, class of 1966 right. that seems to be a problem in our political environment. Well, hopefully all of that will change and we'll see more of those groups, you know, 
with more visibility you know in the civic space and of course that will change but again i have to say thank you for joining us on the program today i ideally had you and you know sharing your thoughts with us on this um but let me quickly also move to elvis elvis i mean let's also get your perspective on this as we wind down this conversation the issue of having young people i mean i'm not um I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I'm in a particular space, but, you know, let me just put it this way to you. Um, how much of young people out there do you know, like or young, or a group of young people, you know, that have come together to put themselves forward uh, in terms of policy and, and all of that in the country? Quickly, please. We have a lot of, like you say, we have a lot of young people as they put themselves together. Uh, it was young persons that brought about... Um, the uh, not too young to run bill that has been signed into, so, and there are still young persons engaging because a handful of us were tired, were tired of the bleakness of the country. And for us to change the dynamics, for us to make Nigeria better, we yeah. have to come together. And um, we're doing it in little bits, but I think the first 223 will come together because it's only Nigerians, which is make up of almost 60 percent of young persons, that can make Nigeria better. Uh, like, like it's enjoying from the rotten status quo of this like, country, but like like it's, young person. like it's been said, you know, it is uh, you know a journey of a million miles begins with um, a step. So, like you said, we're That's not right. there yet, uh, but uh, before twenty twenty three, hopefully, yes, we'll get there. But I have to say thank you as well to you for joining us today on the program and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. Indeed, you're welcome. Um, so, just wrap it up. Well, I want to believe that. Um, Nigeria will get better, hopefully, by God's grace. But the way the dynamics are right now, I don't see anything happening in the short while. But I want to hope that by before 2023, probably the youths will wake up. But right now, they are very much asleep. Well, hopefully, hopefully uh, I, I, share, I share in that hope with you. Yeah. And, I mean, we'll be here by God's grace. Hopefully, you're not in one of the groups that you made mention earlier <laughs> as uh, looking at leaving Nigeria. So, hopefully, we'll be here by 2023 and we'll see uh, all of these changes come into place. But I have to say thank you as well to you. You're welcome. Um, Olukaide Oye Makinde for joining us today and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Well, that's where we are. Let's now take a look at the movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Kicking off this week's most viewed videos is a new entrance to the charts as one of the kidnappers of students from Bethel Baptist School confesses how much his share of the ransom was. He said he was given 100,000 naira. It is followed by a scathing description of Nigeria's nickname, the Giant of Africa, by former Emir of Kano, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. We're, we're the Giant of Africa. We're, we're a giant with clay feet. Okay? So, we are 14th in innovation in Sub-Saharan Africa. Third spot is taken by President Buhari's speech during the UN General Assembly in New York last week. Nigeria has spared no effort in addressing the challenges of terrorism posed by the activities of Boko Haram in Northeast Nigeria, the Lake Chad region, as well as banditry in the Northwest and North Central. Falling a place on the charts to second is the EFCC chairman slumping during a presentation at this year's National Identity Day held in Abuja. While top spot is the arrest of a fake soldier with AK-47 rifle, 60 other suspects in Nasarawa state. And that's it. That's the movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week and also where we wrap it up on the show today. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias.